Hey y'all, thanks for tuning in to Outdoor Indoor Texan. Today I'll be showing you all my recipe for duck bourguignon, or more simply put, duck stew. It's finally fall, the first few cold fronts have started to roll into Texas, and with that dip in temp, it's time to bring the Dutch oven out and fill the house with that amazing aroma of stewing meat, vegetables, and herbs. The original recipe for the stew actually came to me from Ducks Unlimited, who seemed to know a thing or two about duck meat. Over the years, I added a few tweaks of my own, and the result is a savory and hearty stew that simmers for hours in the kitchen, making even the leanest game bird tender and moist. Besides time, it really doesn't take much trouble to throw together, and you'll have plenty of leftovers for future quick meals. Before getting started, make sure to check the description below for a detailed list of ingredients and supplies necessary for this cook. Once you've got everything rounded up, let's get to cooking. You can't have duck stew without duck. I use this stew specifically for wild duck that I hunt, as it tends to really soften some of the stronger game flavors in wild duck. Also, it tenderizes even the leanest species. Today, I'm cooking with green wing teal. Regardless if it's farm raised or something you shot in the field, you'll want to cube up about 8 to 12 skinless duck breasts depending on how meaty you like a stew. Aim for 1 to 2 inch cubes in size. Once your duck meat is cubed, add a healthy dose of salt and pepper. Following the pepper, I'm going to dust my duck with musket powder black label. This is a seasoning that is specifically made to pair well with wild game. The black label, in my experience, has a number of spices that really blend well with duck meat, so everything gets a healthy sprinkle before we move on. If you're interested at all in checking out musket powder for yourself, I'll make sure to leave the link in my description below. It's really a wonder rub when it comes to wild game, and I highly suggest checking it out. Final bit of prep for the duck meat, we're going to give the duck a quick dusting of flour. You can either follow my lead and toss them into a bag, or use a bowl to dredge the meat that way. Either way, dust off the excess flour when done, and let's move to the range for our next steps. Using a large oven safe pot or dutch oven, set it on the range and put the heat to medium. Now add 6 strips of diced bacon to brown. Once the bacon started to brown, add about 2-3 to three tablespoons of olive oil and let it heat up for a minute or so before moving forward. Now toss in your duck meat to brown all surfaces and make sure to continuously stir. We don't want anything to get burnt. With duck meat browned, toss in a diced yellow onion and sweat it out until it's translucent. Then add 3 minced garlic cloves, 3 cups of beef stock, and then 3 cups of red wine. An essential tip for making stews is after tossing in all those liquids, take your wooden spoon and scrape it across the bottom of your pot. There should be a good deal of flavor stuck to the surface from browning all that meat. Now you can release that back into the stew. Now bring the pot to a rolling boil. And once you finally get to that boil, throw on the top and toss it in your oven for 3 hours at 325 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, it's been 3 hours and now we're essentially adding everything else on the ingredient list to the pot. First up is the bouquet garni, which is a fancy way of saying a sprig of rosemary, a couple sprigs of thyme, and a couple bay leaves all tied together with butcher string. Then add three and a half tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of tomato paste, or five tablespoons of tomato sauce, two cups of baby carrots chopped into coins, or three large carrots cut into small two inch pieces, two cups of golden or red potatoes quartered into bite sized chunks and then half to one pound of mushrooms depending on how much you like them. Now if you have any beef stock left over, add that liquid until it just covers everything in the pot. If you run out of beef stock before everything's covered though, you're also welcome to just use water. And with that, put the lid back on your pot, place it back in the oven, and cook it for one hour at 325 degrees. Once that hour is complete, take your pot out of the oven and let's taste our stew. Before you forget, make sure to remove the bouquet garni. His job is done, and you don't want to accidentally serve it to someone in their bowl. Now let's taste the stew. Potatoes have a bad habit of soaking up a ton of salt, so you'll more than likely need to heavily salt the stew from here. Also, feel free to add a dash of this or a splash of that at this point to round out whatever flavor you think it's missing. If you're new to this, just add some salt and cracked pepper, and you can always adjust the stew more specifically once it's served into smaller bowls. And just like that, your stew is ready to serve. Duck stew is a beautiful example of how applying a little bit of time and a little bit of effort to humble ingredients can transform it into something completely otherworldly. This is the perfect comfort food. It pairs really well with cold days, family, and friends. Tasting this stew, 
The hours simmering in that pot have broken down the duck meat into tender little bites. The gravy is silky but thick and very herbaceous. And since we added the veg later in the cooking process, they added just the right amount of fresh bite to the bowl. There's a number of ways you can serve it. I typically just eat it as it is poured into a bowl. But you could dress it up by pouring it over rice or adding a dollop of sour cream or even hot sauce if you're looking for something unique. Regardless of how you tackle it though, make sure to save some for later because this freezes really well and flavors somehow get even more intense the second and third time around. And that'll do it for this recipe and thank you all so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below if you have anything to add to the conversation. I always try to be available to my viewers, so please don't be shy in leaving a quick question. If you're new to the channel, I hope I've been helpful in sharing my perspective, and please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more great content to come. All right, y'all. Take care.